Okay, back for more about the divergence theorem. Now, um, here's where it gets. Here's where we really start to exploit the power of the divergence theorem. We can emulate what we just did, but it had nothing to do with both those curves being a circle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take any curve with the usual outward orientation. There's the unit normals. And we're going to calculate the flux of this special radial, radial pointing vector field, the G vector field. This doesn't work for most vector fields. It's very special to the kind of vector field we're, we're, we're dealing with. And we're going to calculate the flux outward through C of G dot N DS. That's the flux. And we're not going to do it directly. And we couldn't. If, we, if I don't tell you exactly what that curve is, I couldn't do it directly. We'd have to parameterize it, all that kind of stuff. But all I'm telling you is it encircles the origin once. And another way to say that is that I can put in a small circle of some radius. And I don't care what the radius is. Let's just make it some number A that's small enough to fit in there. And I know, so we're trying to figure that out. I know that the flux through CA, let's call that C, uh, radius A, and let's call the curve CA. We just calculated that no matter what that radius is, there's 2 pi worth of stuff flowing out through that thing. Now, we can use exactly the same argument that we had before. We're just going to call this in between the region D. So let's let D is the region in between. And then the diver 2D diver divergence theorem says the flux outward through the boundary of that, of this very special vector field, is equal to the double integral over the whole thing of the divergence of G. That's a G. But that's still zero. And it's really, really important that we Take, took that circle, and we didn't try to have R B include the origin, because this wouldn't work, because G is not a nice vector field over that whole region. But over D, which doesn't include what's inside C, the circle C A, this does make sense, and it does work. And now, so 0 is equal to the integral over that boundary, but that's the integral over our curve C. with its ordinary orientation, because that orientation we already put on it, going outward, is the right one to be the outward boundary with respect to D, this area in between. But the thing, the orientation that comes from the divergence theorem is an inward orientation on CA. But we can f fix that by putting a minus sign. Because I want to refer back to the previous calculation that this was equal to 2 pi. That was using CA with the ordinary outward orientation. Out away from the origin. And the orientation we would have gotten from Green's theorem would be going inward toward the origin. Because as far as D is concerned, the region in between, that's outward. I know inward and outward are kind of ambiguous terms, but hopefully you see what I mean. So that means these are equal, but this guy is equal to 2 pi. We knew that already. That's what our previous calculation showed. So the integral is now equal to 2 pi. And it doesn't matter what C is, as long as it's exactly going around the origin just once. If it intersects itself, you have to be a little more uh, clever about it, and you actually get things like 4 pi or 6 pi. And if it goes the other way, you get minus 4 pi more minus 6 pi. But that's the, the simplest case of that. Okay. So, in the next part, I think you call it number seven, we talk about the interpretation of this. As I've said before, if you have a divergence-free vector field, you want to think of that as a fluid that's incompressible, like water is, is to a very good approximation, incompressible. It doesn't disappear anywhere. It doesn't get denser anywhere. It doesn't, isn't created anywhere. It doesn't get less dense anywhere. It just flows from place to place. 
Um, and so how on earth was I getting a flow in the first place? Well, that has to do with what's going on at the origin. What we've discovered, sort of if you want to think of, of it maybe in an experimental mindset, what we've discovered is that if we take any little fence, little you know, put a little net around the origin, we keep getting the same amount of flow to pi, no matter how small the flow is. So what that suggests is that we want to think of this as an idealized thing, a point source of the fluid. It's a point source of fluid there with flow equal to 2 pi coming out of that thing. And that's why, no matter what curve I put around it, I keep getting that answer 2 pi. And now, if we put the flow, if we put the curve over here, we get the same amount of flowing in as flowing out, because I'm not circling that, that point source. And so this is a really interesting kind of thing. We've got a model of something that has an infinitely concentrated source, but if you actually just look at the flux, it's a finite number. It's 2 pi. It's only if you try to look at the flux per unit area that it would be um, equal to 0. So the next one, number 8, not a special vector field. Well, not something that I'm going to write down the formula for. It's not very random, though, because it's going to satisfy some very special properties. One is that div f equals 0 everywhere but at two points. Kind of like g was non-differentiable at one point. Let's say 0 minus 1 and 0 plus 1. And so we want to think of this as water flowing, or some sort of other incompressible fluid flowing around. And now i got to actually look and see. Ah, here we are now. What my numbers were. Um, I want to do the same numbers that were in the handout. And now I seem to have lost the other page of that handout. Okay, so the second thing was that the flux of F out of a circle enclosing only 0 minus 1 is known and the flux of F out of a circle, I know these pens are going kind of going to hell, but uh, enclosing only 0 plus 1. That's a known number, and I just don't have the numbers in front of me, but let me just give you the idea, and then I'll take a convenient break since the, my time is running out anyway. So here's 0, 1, and 0 minus 1. We have mystery, mysterious things could be happening to the vector field at these points, and they very well likely are happening at those points. And what we know is that somebody has measured, somebody's put a net around that point and a net around that point and measured how much flow is coming out of those nets. And they've also guaranteed for us that the divergence of f is 0 everywhere but at those points, and therefore um, there shouldn't be anywhere else where the fluid is created or destroyed. And so we should be able to figure out a lot about the flow of this fluid, and that's what we'll do um, in the next video.